broadly broken down in terms of when we sleep, when we sleep, what our natural tendencies are. There's the larks. These are the early, early morning ones, up at 5, you know, sort of wanting to go to bed by 10, that kind of thing. There's the uh, owls, you know, getting up at 10, wanting to go to bed at 2 or so. It's a very natural body tendency. And then there's the hummingbirds. That's this larger group in between. They say there's about 10% larks, 20% owls, and the rest, the 70%, most of us fall in the middle somewhere, but sort of hovering in the middle zone. You know, from the, from the legal perspective, just to make it something we sort of can embrace with that background, it's almost like we've got these two forces, these two companies. One is called the Circadic Arousal System, Inc. Circadic Arousal System, Inc. Keyword being arousal. So, circadian, or circadian arousal. System Inc. This is the part of us that wants to stay what? Awake or asleep? Awake. And then we have the homeostatic sleep process or pressure. Key word here being sleep. We can call this quartz. So there's these two entities that are taking place inside of us at all times. One of them wants us to stay awake all the time, all the time. The other one wants us to sleep all the time. This one's always pushing for us to sleep. It's, there's neurons, there's hormones, and there's chemicals. They're all at play saying sleep, 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 sleep. And these are always pushing for us to stay awake, 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 awake. But they vary in terms of their intensity. They vary in terms of their intensity. So, for the arousal, and for the sleep, it looks like this. We'll take most people's typical day in terms of when it would naturally start if they have their druthers. 7 a.m. 9, 11, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, and 11 p.m. Okay, so like a, the stretch of the day. Of course, we know this happens, and we know this happens. And what I'm about to draw carries over. So it's a non-stop. But here's the way it looks. Yellow, because it's arousal, we want to stay awake. You think at 7 o'clock in the morning, this system is engaged, high, or is it sort of petering out? What do you think it's doing at 7 o'clock? It is saying, hello. And then, of course, when we hit 11 o'clock, where is it? It's like, <sighs> I'm exhausted. And we, then we'll come back up. Meanwhile, where do you think our homeostatic sleep process, or the pressure to sleep, is at around 7 o'clock in the morning for many of us? Correct down here, and it's slowly working its way up, okay? So these two processes are always at play. There are some people, sadly, very sadly, for whom this one is not working, and they never sleep. They can't. You can do anything. You can't have them sleep. What's interesting from the napping perspective is this. They've done some interesting studies where they say, well, let's put people in a room where it's dark and they really can't have their cues of when they should be awake, when they should be asleep. Let's see what happens. Let's see what they just naturally would do if we let enough time pass they just sort of like didn't know what they were supposed to do because there was no alarm clock, there weren't people saying let's go to work, there was no sun, there was no moon, there was no... What they found was this. They slept a healthy amount of time, eight, maybe a little bit more hours. Naturally, they go to bed, they would wake up, it would be this nice, if you will, healthy in the, in the general, generous sense, generous sense of sleep, generous amount of sleep. But they also would nap. They would have this tendency in the middle of the day to want to take a nap. Now, what do you notice happening between 1 and 3 o'clock in these two systems? They're sort of 
not as ready to take on the other. Here it's clear who's going to win, or at least who's going to win in terms of what you're feeling. Here you are feeling tired. Here you are feeling awake. Here, you know how so much of the world sleeps in the middle of the day? You know the siesta, right? You ever have it where in the middle of the afternoon you're tired, like at 3 o'clock or so, and you just sort of, well, this is what we think is happening. These two systems are at this low point. And there's just like this, huh. Because our body is saying, and maybe for important reasons in terms of our health and our learning and our memory, because memory is very important for survival, time to take a nap.